Hi friends, it's Valerie. Welcome back to this week's What's For Dinner. If you are new here, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button and join my YouTube family. And don't forget to leave a like or a comment down below because it really does help my channel. Now today's What's For Dinner, I've got lots of yummy meals for you. Um, so many things that we enjoyed, but my favorite for the week is going to be a non-bread pizza. Now, if you know me, you know I love non-bread pizzas, but this one with pesto is probably my favorite so far. It was just really, really delicious. Um, but other than that, let's just get started. So I'm just taking some of these farm rich Italian style meatballs and I'm putting these on my air fryer tray. I'm gonna air fry these. The directions in the bag say 350. I might go there or a little bit lower on the temp, um, but 350 always seems to be a good temperature for me. And then I'll air fry them. I'll check them at like at 10 to 15 minutes and see how they are. And I'll let you know in total, like how long it took in the end. So I checked them at about 12, 13 minutes and they were done. So that worked out, but I did shake the basket like about halfway through just to make sure I can get maybe some browning on more sides. And I am heating up in a pot just some pasta sauce. You just need a jar of pasta sauce, whatever works for you. I'm using the Pioneer Woman Garden Vegetable. I love this sauce and um, I had to use it up because of expiration date. So I figured it'd be perfect for this. And then I tossed in the cooked meatballs into my sauce and I just kind of let them simmer in that sauce for a few minutes while I gathered the rest of the things I needed to finish up the meal. And for the bread part of this, I have these hot dog buns from Sam's Club that I need to use some up. So they're not your small hot dog bun, they're pretty large. So I buttered them, I put some garlic powder and some parsley, spread that on top of them and I cooked them at 400 or baked them at 400 for five minutes just to crisp them up a bit first. And then I pulled them out of the oven and I took some of these mozzarella cheese slices and I put that on top. You can also use shredded cheese or provolone or whatever cheese you like, um, but I have these mozzarella ones to use up. So I put those on top, put them back in the oven for an additional just one to two minutes just to melt the cheese. Around three meatballs fit on this for me. You could probably get away with four, but three was a perfect amount for me. And I just served this with a side Caesar salad. Um, Y'all, you know by now, if you know by now, I do love anything that is breaded to make it into garlic bread first now. Because it is so, so delicious. Um, but we really, really love these. It's so quick, simple, easy, and it's, it really is amazing. I needed to throw something really quick together for dinner this night. So I'm combining in a bowl a couple tablespoons worth of some garlic, then a tablespoon of honey, two tablespoons or so of soy sauce. I took some rice wine vinegar and doing maybe like a quarter to a half teaspoons worth. And then just a splash of some sesame oil. Uh, I like ginger, so you can grate ginger but, or not, but I have this squeeze one, so I did about a tablespoon's worth of that, as well as a tablespoon or so's worth of hoisin sauce, and I had this chili onion crunch from Trader Joe's, so I'm also just taking some of that. That's going to be to your heat preference, so I like to sometimes put a little, give it all a good stir, and then taste the sauce. So you can add more of the chili sauce if you need and then i like a touch more sweetness so you could add some more honey but i decided to add a little bit of brown sugar in there and mix it all together i cooked up one pound of ground beef and i can't really chop it much on the camera here for you because every time i do it with this meat chopper because my camera sits on the counter it just shakes it so bad and it looks horrible for you guys but i just cooked that until there was no pink remaining drain the grease if you need to and then I started pouring some of the sauce in. I just kind of did this like to eye. Like I was going to be probably left with a little bit of sauce, which is perfectly fine with me because I'm going to find another use for it. But um, yeah, just pour it and see how much you need for that. If you want to use the whole thing, that's perfectly fine. I was trying to save a little bit because I was going to be making some asparagus and I wanted to put that over it. So I have a pound of asparagus. I've sprayed a little bit of avocado oil and I'm just drizzling the rest of this sauce on top. I'm probably not going to like toss them around. I should have, but I didn't want another bowl or another dish. So I was like, I'll just drizzle it on. It'll be fine. Uh, some of it did fall through the grates there, but no big deal. It still added a little extra flavor, a little of that like Asian style flavor. This would be amazing with green beans as well. And I just put a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. I air fried those at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. 
this is the kind of meal that I really enjoy when in a pinch of time. Like, uh, ground beef is something that, like, I don't mind defrosting in the microwave. It takes 10 minutes and it's ready to go. So, um, that's exactly what I had done for this meal. But it's also very tasty. I put black sesame seeds and green onions on top. If you had yum yum sauce, it would be amazing. Uh, and then I just served it over a bed of white rice and those asparagus. And it was quick, easy, and something we both really, really love. So I've had this recipe safe for quite a while, like I've been wanting to try it, but I just hadn't. And this is the perfect time to do a different thing for taco night, um, but still having tacos. So I'm cooking up some, I'm using ground turkey, you can do ground beef, but I'm doing ground turkey and just cook that till there's no pink remaining and then add in taco sauce. If you have a package, just add a packet of taco sauce. I'm just adding a few tablespoons from the bigger container and I'm adding a little bit of water um, turkey is a little bit on the leaner side so you know there's less grease I don't typically add water when I'm doing it to beef so I added a little bit of water just enough to m get that mixed together then I'm taking my taco shells and I'm placing them in a baking dish I'm using the stand and stuff ones um, because they lean on each other if you didn't have the stand and stuff ones it'd be perfectly fine and you're just filling those shells with your ground beef mixture. Now, this did make in total nine tacos. I just, we only did six at this time just because it's what we needed at the moment. And I had leftovers and I made three more. So, in total, the one pound of meat made nine tacos. And now I'm taking some shredded cheese and just sprinkling that all in there. Just as much cheese as you would like but this is about how much I did and then I put these in the oven I baked them at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for eight minutes that's gonna crisp up the shell but they're not too crispy it's hard to explain they're like softened but still crispy at the same time this is what they look like and then I just cut up what I like in my tacos which is tomato and lettuce I also just slice some cucumbers for the side because I like a like cool vegetable on the side and I'm going to make some sopasa to the bottom of a pot. I'm just adding a little bit of oil, maybe a couple tablespoons worth. And then I take these small mini shells. This is a 7 ounce bag. You can do up to a 7.5 ounce bag. And then put them in the oil and toast them up. So keep stirring them constantly, but they're going to get like nice and golden brown bits on some of them. You don't want to burn them, but you want them nice and golden brown. And... I'm also adding in some diced up onion. Now the recipe I'll have linked for you does say you can put in like a chunk of onion. I like prefer it diced so that's what I do. That's what I've always done so I keep doing that way and uh, just let that saute a bit to soften a little bit and then take one chicken bouillon cube and mix it in with one cup of water. I microwave that so it would dissolve and I'm pouring that in. Now I'm, I change things up sometimes with this. See, I add in a can of tomato sauce, and then the recipe says add the half a can of the water from the tomato sauce. I add the full can, and even added another half a can of water, but I also add an additional bouillon cube because of the additional water that I'm adding. I like it a little bit more soupy than what the recipe calls for. That's just to preference. And I give that all a good stir. I also add in two whole cloves of garlic. I do smash them a little with a knife, just press down on them, but I leave them whole and put them in. And I cover that with the lid and I'm going to let that just simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes is uh, what it typically calls for. So uh, you could check it at about 10 minutes, but prior to 10 minutes, try not to take the lid off and do anything to it. Um, but once 10 minutes comes, you can start to check it, check how soft your pasta is getting in, test for, you know, if you like it a little bit on the firmer side or not. And here is it all plated. Um, those tacos were so delicious. Um, I cannot describe how good they were considering they were just your basic taco, really. But that baking it and with the cheese, it changed everything and it made like such a good texture that was soft but still crunchy it wasn't soggy and they were delicious and then of course i just love some soap on the side um it's a nice change up from having spanish rice and i definitely recommend you giving this a try on your next taco night all right y'all this is one of my favorites of the week um sadly i lost the clip of footage that i took i'm thankful that i at least have a couple photos 
but the video footage is gone but it's pretty simple i just took these non breads and i took the pesto and i layered a layer of that on top of it like you would marinara sauce and then i just put the fresh mozzarella like pieces placed around to my liking some sun-dried tomatoes and then i cut up some cherry tomatoes and i drizzled those across the top as well as some like dollops of ricotta cheese around if you had fresh basil that would have been incredible on this i didn't have any fresh basil but it, it was still really really delicious the flavor this had was like next level with those like sun-dried toma tomatoes it was so incredible like we both were raving about this we had it again just like just to have it again another day like for lunch because it was so so good so just a little tip I have for you is to stick your naan bread by itself in the air fryer for a minute on each side. I did it about 360 degrees and that's going to help crisp it up first before putting your toppings on. That's going to help it hold its shape and not get so soft from the toppings. I really love it that way. But then after that, once you get your toppings on, all it takes is a few minutes, anywhere from four to six minutes to just melt the cheese and it's ready to go. I served this with a side salad, a side Caesar salad, but wow, I really cannot rave how much we love this. I don't want to keep going on and on about it, but it was absolutely amazing. Okay, so for this recipe, you're going to need some shredded barbecue chicken. You can do that however you prefer. I am just putting a couple chicken breasts into the crock pot, and I'm drizzling them with some barbecue sauce and sprinkling with a little bit of brown sugar, which I don't even think I'll do next time I do this, but I wanted to give it a try. And simple as that, I'm going to put the lid on, let it cook while I'm gone. It's going to be on low for about six hours. And then you come home and it's easy to just shred right up. I took the remainder of the sauce that was left in the bottom of the crock pot and I put that into the bowl that we're going to be mixing everything together. Now I am halving the recipe that I'll have linked for you so because we just don't need that much. But I'm taking a cup and a half worth of the shredded chicken and I'm putting it in there. Kind of like mixing that together to see what I'm working with. And uh, then I would put a half a cup of barbecue sauce now i'm not really measuring i'm just kind of squeezing it into my preference some people like way more barbecue sauce and some like less i like it less like i like some but i don't want it to like overly powering or overpowering and then i'm adding in a half a cup or or so of diced red onion and then it says to do a mozzarella cheddar blend i didn't have a blend already so uh in total i need a one and a half cups of cheese so i'm doing three fourths cup of cheddar and then taking three fourths cup of mozzarella and i am adding that into the bowl and then just give that all a good mix together now this is where i realized okay i might need some more barbecue sauce because i'm not thinking about the fact that i need to coat some of that cheese additional ingredients that we put in there as well so i did add some more enough to just make sure it all stuck together i did give it a nice quick little taste just to see because i like i said i don't like it overly barbecue sauced and then i was taking I've taken a can of crescent rolls and I've opened them up and put them onto my baking sheet that I have this little silicone mat down on. You can also use like parchment paper and just place them all down and then I'm taking that barbecue mixture we just put together and I'm placing it on top of every one of the crescent rolls. Now you're just not supposed to cover the bottom inch of like the thinner part of the crescent roll. So I just put it, I fit it all on there. I made sure to get it all on. If you really didn't want to overstuff them or you had some extra mixture, you could also make a quesadilla with that. I bet that'd be delicious. But anyways, after that, go ahead and roll them up from the largest side to the thinner side. And um, you will see later that they were on the looser side, some of them. So if you want these really neat and pretty, as you'll see later, make sure just to give them a tighter roll than I did. They still were fine, perfectly fine. Um, I wouldn't go ahead and take the extra work unless I was presenting these to someone, but um, just go ahead and bake those in the oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for 18 to 20 minutes. And for those of you who just want to see the macaroni and cheese that I made up, I made this Cracker Barrel oven baked one. This is the sharp cheddar. I thought that it would complement the meal pretty well. Um, I just followed the directions on that. And I'm going to make up some green beans. Wasn't sure what vegetable to make, 
but I was craving these green beans. My aunt always makes them like this for the holidays. She always has. So, you know, this was what I was raised on for the holidays. And so I needed that in my life. Now she does it way better and she does it in the cast iron and it's, they're amazing, but I just want to make shift a little bit of them. So I put a couple cans of green beans in a pan with about three, four stick of butter. And I put some minced garlic. I ran out, so I did some garlic powder as well. Now I'm taking those real crumbled bacon pieces from Sam's Club. And I'm adding, just scooping some in there to my preference. Now this is where, you know, you would want to cook up some bacon and crisp it up and chop it up and put it in there. It would be way more amazing. But this did in a pinch, and it also gave me a reason to use up some of those bacon bits. And then I seasoned them with some salt and pepper and they are delicious as always just of course never as good as hers because it's just always better when you go home and have them like on a holiday this whole meal really hit the spot um i've never had like crescent rolled chicken roll-ups like that before but they were really good with the barbecue and the cheese all mixed in those were tasty um and i love that you can just kind of like hold them in your hand easily you could just pick it up and bite it um the it was paired really well with the green beans really love that with it next time the only thing i change is doing not baked mac and cheese but just like creamy mac and cheese i, I would know i would love that way more but all in all it was super good this last meal is an incredible side dish it was so good but to a pan over medium high heat i've added in a tablespoon of butter and to that i'm going to add a half a tablespoon of olive oil and once those melted i am taking some sliced mushrooms it calls for about seven ounces i think i did eight ounces of mushrooms and then two to four cloves of minced garlic and added that into the butter and oil let those saute up for a few minutes maybe about five minutes i'm gonna let those mushrooms cook down as you can see once they're nice and softened i uh, remove them from the pan and set them aside now to that same pan they have you add cooking wine like a third cup dry white wine i don't really use wine so i used some bouillon and i used the garlic base one to make the third cup of liquid with that then i'm adding in two dashes of italian seasoning with one teaspoon of lemon juice and one half a teaspoon of dijon mustard i give that a good whisk to get that combined and then i'm gonna take one teaspoon of flour and kind of sprinkle that in and whisk that together again this is going to make like a roux and we're going to let that thicken for a couple minutes until it becomes like a smooth paste then i'm adding in one cup of heavy whipping cream and i will whisk that together to get it all combined and, and then i'll let that simmer for just a couple of minutes and then um, I'm taking some cheese and adding it in at this point. Uh, it doesn't call for that in the recipe. It does say you can use Parmesan later as like a, like to top it with, but I'm going to add it into the sauce. So I, I had a blend. It was like an Italian blend, which is like mozzarella, fontina, uh, Parmesan, like a blend like that. So I just took a nice hefty handful. Just mozzarella would be fine in this too, I'm sure, or a blend of like mozzarella and Parmesan. And I just whisked that in till it melted. And then I'm going to take those mushrooms that we cooked up and add them back in. They have, even with the liquid that was like in the bottom of the bowl, I let that go in there too. That's also going to thin the sauce out just a little bit. If you do feel you need to thin your sauce out more, reserve some of your pasta water. Because we are cooking up 8 ounces of pasta. I did linguine as the one, my pers personal preference of choice for pasta when it comes to dishes like this. And... I'm adding that pasta in here, giving it all a good toss with that creamy sauce and those mushrooms. And I did season that with some salt and pepper. And I did use some of the pasta water, even though I didn't get it on camera. I had it sitting there while my chicken was finishing and it thickened up a bit. So I added a little bit of that just to thin it out a little bit more. I served this mushroom pasta alongside some grilled chicken that I did in the Ninja Foodie Grill and some arugula salad. I like that with like lemon and parmesan, but I was out of parmesan, so I just did what I had, a little olive oil, salt, um, lemon juice, and I had some other dressing, like a Italian one. I put a few drops of that as well. This whole meal was absolutely incredible because of that mushroom pasta. Like, it was next level, so, so good. Definitely a new favorite when it comes to side dishes. And we're huge fans of mushrooms though so of course if you don't like mushrooms you might not love this but they were so meaty and just had enough cheese and it was just so so good thanks so much for watching friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that little bell so you don't miss out on any future videos and i hope you all are having a great day